You know who else has dad strength? Tell me. It's got to be Demetrius Johnson. Why is that? Well, he's a dad. And he is going tomorrow. He is going for his eleventh uh, straight title defense against William Rice or Reese. And Cody Garbrandt has come out and said after he beats uh, TJ, he's going to go down to 125 pounds and beat Demetrius. And Cody said that. He walks around at 146, and I was thinking, yeah, you walk around at 146, so you're going to lose 21 pounds, which is, you know, 11 or 13 percent of your body weight. That's a lot of weight, young man, and you already hold the title. How does it convert to the the strength thing, though? How did that convert to the dad strength? It didn't. We're talking about the fight tomorrow. <laughs> All right, cool. I don't know that I have any thoughts on it. Do you, do you want to give some kind of an opinion on that fight tomorrow? Well, Demetrius is going to win. He's uh, very few times in sports uh, where there is somebody that is a full step or two ahead of the competition, and Demetrius at that weight class is a step or two away from the, the field. That is the exact reason that you don't have any opinion on it, because he hasn't been tested uh he hadn't lost since Brad Pickham, Pickett beat him in, in the WEC. He has probably the best MMA coach of all time that nobody talks about, which is Matt Hume. And they've got a program, and he keeps getting better. Yeah, he's incredible. No no two ways about that. Uh, you know, he had a really tough fight with Tim Elliott. And he was caught in some positions. You know, that guillotine stands out for me. And he t- went out there and took care of business, but... Uh, I mean, he was in a fight. He was in a tussle there, and that all caught everybody by surprise because I think Elliot was, you know, he was three and two at one point. He was even released from the UFC, and it, it, just just some stuff where you kind of dismissed him. It's like, no, you can't do that. You know, you can't do that at 125 pounds. Guys' records are deceptive, uh, and, and there's also an element where if Demetrius believes anything that I just said going into the Tim Elliott fight and didn't prepare or focus or the same thing where he bought into that, he, there's an underperformance. I'm just saying, you never know what's going to happen. It's so easy to look at guys on paper and say, well, this guy's much better, and you can even be right. Maybe that guy is much better, but it doesn't equate to a sure thing win. If there's anything we've learned in this sport, there is no sure thing win. And if he uh, if he's overlooking anything, which I have no reason to believe that he would, but if, and we've seen other guys do it, Man, it's it's quick out there, particularly at that weight class, because they're only separated. And Demetrius is the best and all that, but, boy, only by a little bit. I mean, that weight class is so hard. It's so underappreciated how tough and the speed and and the abilities and the versatility and the cardio. You don't see those guys getting tired at that weight class. You see guys getting tired at every weight class, not at that one. It's just such an underappreciated weight for how hard it is. You, you know, BJ Penn... Randy Couture and then Conor McGregor are the three people that have held two two titles. Went back and forth, whichever way they they done it. Well, now it's an epidemic. Now everybody wants to get you know a bunch of titles. Um, Freddie Roach came out and said GSP's master plan is to to get three titles: 185, 170, and Conor. Um, you have Cody coming out and saying, you know, he's got, he's got TJ staring him right in the face, and Dominic Cruz who. As crazy as Dominic Cruz is when he's winning, how crazy do you think Dominic Cruz is now that he lost his title? So he's he's got those two people staring him back to back in the face in the face, and he's talking about losing a bunch of weight to go down to fight Demetrius. That doesn't make any sense to me. Remember when Dominic Cruz recaptured that title, beat TJ, came on this show. Screamed at us, screamed about everybody else, was pissed off about everything, and we had to we had to stop him and remind him. You hey, won. You, you know you won. You know you won that. Fight. I don't get it. And he just and then he went off again about how mad he was. There was a headline or somebody that said something about him or didn't like his performance. Whatever. He was so mad. So yes, when you bring up the point of how how crazy is Dominic in victory? Yeah. How would you like to have to fight him coming off of a loss? No. No, thank you. Somebody's yeah. gonna have to do it. But how would you like it? Now, to your point, though, about these guys wanting to change weight classes, what do you think of that? Do you like that? I hate, I hate it. I hate it. Uh was talking to Jake Smith, and now Jake is going down to 160 pounds to 155 pounds because he lost a match. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, you know, 
let's let's figure out what you need to weigh. Let's let's go get a you know a, a body fat composition and see where you're at to see if that makes sense before the very first thing you do because you lost a match is cut down to 165 160 pounds have a full-time job it's 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 insane to, it's insane to me that that the key to the kingdom is always starvation now 160 pounds isn't a weight class are you saying that he's like getting a catch weight fight and then he's going to drop down to 155 why are you saying 160 exactly that's that, the plan that was that was the plan and, I, and i'll tell you what uh, to disagree with you just on that one specific case of jake smith i i like that i think maybe he should be at 55 somebody else has suggested that and i think that he could do it. let's see let's see where that goes but i do disagree with you on the other point, I like that the guys are switching weight classes. You know, guys were locked in so hard uh, in that organization, in the UFC, to stay in those divisions. And there was a reasoning behind it, and it, it made a lot of sense. But once those divisions got so full, I just love the parody. I love when guys can switch around. I like the boxing guys do it. Now, it infuriates me that it's over three and a three and a half pounds. And, I mean, they just give a belt to anybody and, and their mom that could draw a ticket. But that's a totally different conversation. I do like when guys can change. Just for me, I'm talking as a fan. I think it's fun. And if a guy can go around and capture belts, then he, I, then go prove it. Because there's not a lot of guys that can. There's not a, guy, a lot of guys that are willing to try. And if we got this new era of guys that are saying, I'm not only the best here, I'm the best there and the best there too, and I'm willing to go prove it, I think that I think it's interesting because I love the parody. You know, I, lo- I love the parody. When somebody goes from Bellator to the UFC, that's fun for me because now you're seeing matches you weren't going to see. When somebody goes from the UFC to Bellator, you're seeing these matches that you just couldn't have seen before. And when somebody switches divisions, it's another one of those things where you go, whoa, that's a super fight right out of the gate on its face. It's a super fight because it's one we couldn't make before because they weren't in the division. They weren't allowed to leave their division. It, 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 I agree with you. I hate uh, my bigger point is I, I hate when they lose weight. I do agree with you that it, it's fun to watch them bounce around. As Cody's concerned, uh, he just beat one of the greatest fighters of all time in Dominic Cruz, and and he beat him pretty, pretty wide. If he comes out and runs through TJ or beats TJ, he didn't even have to run through him. Then then I'm sold. I should be sold now because he just beat Dominic. He knocked everybody else out on the way to Dominic. But again, as the fan, I, I've went, I fell down the rabbit hole a lot, thinking, okay, this guy's the next best thing, you know, and he takes a right to the to the chops and goes to sleep. Yeah, and, and a little bit more time is going to have to play out. Then we're going to have to be able to look back on it and go, okay, is this good? Are the numbers good? Is this what people want to see? Do they like the parody like me? Because it also screws up divisions. You know, when you're seeing it, 185 pounds. What an incredible matchup where you've got the greatest 70-pounder ever in St. Pierre taking on the current middleweight champion in Bisping. What an incredible, just, just leave it at that. Pretty good storyline. But it does then stop the entire 85-pound division. Now you've got Jacques Array, a number one contender. You've got Weidman, a former champion. You've got Rockholt, uh, you know, top contender. You've got Yoel Romero, who's officially named the number one contender, never lost. you got Gatsby. you just got all these guys, you know, Kelvin Gatsby. you got all these guys. That have to wait. There's there's only so many matches, and that's the one downside to this sport is that these guys only run out there three times a year. You know, boxing Floyd Mayweather twice a year uh, on busy years, and it just, so it does take some opportunity away. I liked the catch weights too. You know, Rich Franklin got to do a few of those. Well, I think he fought Dan Henderson at 195 pounds. He fought Vandalay at 195 pounds. But all of a sudden, you get a guy that is kind of a tweener between weights, where it's like, look, 205 to 185, I'm on 195. But they they made weight classes. Boxing does that all the time, where they agree on a weight and they go. Maybe over time, that would just become such a headache in the offices and with the matchmakers to get everything done that that you and I come back on and go, hey, this sucks. Everybody needs to pick a division. You're married to your vision. Sign a contract, and you stay there. But right now, without seeing it play out, I could only fantasize about some of those matches that you could make if one guy had to go down five pounds and the other guy agreed to go up five pounds and no title would be on the line. It would just be for fun, but you could still figure it out. There are some very, very deep weight classes from from 35, 45, 55, 70, and 85. Deep, 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 deep weight classes. You know what I'd like to see? A tournament. They have a you know have, especially at the forty five the forty five and fifty five where there's well at fifty five there's not a champ right now uh, the Connor's the champ but then they were going to have an interim champ but sure. then they missed weight man run a tournament run a tournament at at fifty five 
70 and 85. Tell, tell me what you're suggesting. Or, or how are you envisioning this? A one-night tournament? No, no. It would be over the course of... You like know. what Pride used to do? Like a Grand Prix type deal? Absolutely. Sure. And I think that that's where the sport would be. I think, I really believe that we would have tournaments and that would be the architecture. Uh, people understand that. People from all sports understand a bracket. They understand a tournament. They understand how that gets worked out. You have all sorts of speculation. It could be a lot of fun. You want to know what ruins that? And then what you do, I think I'm going to answer that question. Then what you do is you have an alternate. So when one guy gets hurt, now you've got the wild card coming up from 70, dropping down from 85. You have a wild card that nobody knows about that they, they know he's a wild card ahead of time. You know, there's some interesting things that you could do on that format. Well, but it, you're right. I think you were going to go down. You got guys pulling out of fights. That's the weight. whole thing. I mean, you might have just solved the problem by having the alternate. And so when we're breaking down a bracket and doing speculation, you're trying to put that on major shows. And you've got Jim Rome talking about it. And you've got ESPN doing a breakdown. And then they said, but what if this? Don't forget, this guy's floating out there. That's how Daniel Cormier got his break when he came through Strike Force. He was not supposed to be part of that eight-man Grand Prix. He was number nine. He was the odd man out. He wins the whole thing. And that's how his name got exposed. But yes, uh, Joel, that is the problem with it. I think, I really believe that is where the sport would be. It would be in a tournament right now because everybody gets it and it makes sense. But you can't do it because you have so many wimps. You have so many guys that say, I'll do this and then pull out left, right, and center. I've never seen a sport where more guys will just pull out because they don't feel good. I've just never seen it. It, it could be out there, man. It might happen all the time in sports, and I just don't hear about it. I can tell you it doesn't happen in boxing. It doesn't happen in wrestling. It is unique as far as combat goes to MMA. But I have never seen a guy. And, you know, that's exactly what will happen. You'll put a tournament on, and some they're just not going to make the walk. And it's like, well, you know, you kind of need to. We've built this up for three months now. We had the quarterfinals. We had the semifinals. It's time to go for the championship. Now you're saying a wild card comes in the championship. You, this whole thing blows up in our face. And that's happened to promoters time and time again where they just go, look, we can't do it. Let's just do one-offs. Let's stack the card five deep, advertise all five. We're going to lose two of them at the last minute, but it still gives us three and business runs forward. You know, if you weren't dealing with such incredible wimps, uh, you, that's probably where we'd be at. You would have a tournament. I, listen, the, the ultimate fighter is a tournament. It is straight up a tournament. You've got all these guys that say that they're contenders. I'm the number one contender and, and they try to get title shots, you know, by texting somebody or by going into the media why don't we do this if you're all so damn tough and you're the number one contender then let's just take every one of you that says you are let's just take it your word and we'll throw in the ultimate fighter and we'll do a tournament we'll document the whole thing and whoever comes out of this thing's a guy those guys aren't going to agree mr tough mr number one contender is not going to go into a field and say well wait why wouldn't you there's a way to figure this out there's a way to do it with a competitive architecture in place, and instead of using politics and diplomacy, there's there's a way to actually fight this out and figure it out. And if you truly are number one, then definitely you can beat the other guys. That's what you're saying. But you meant it when you did it through text, but you, you don't mean it when it, it involves actually going to the tournament and doing it.